And the ayah that we left you with was, I believe, ayah number 30, when Allah Azza wa Jal says, يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمْ هَلْ امْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ So Allah Azza wa Jal began to speak about the Jahannam, that the Jahannam now is going to ask Allah, Allah Azza wa is going to ask him, are you fill? And the Jahannam will say, do you have any more? And here, ulama of Tafsir Ibn Kathir rahimahullah teaches us that this is an indication that Jahannam will be full. Because at the end, as in the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also mentions that this is the time where Allah Azza wa Jal will take his feet and he will stamp and destroy the Jahannam, those in it, with the people in it, as another form of punishment. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah mentions that when Allah Azza wa Jal does this, takes his feet and stamps the Jahannam, that is more severe of a punishment than a person staying in the Jahannam forever, eternity. To have Allah Azza wa Jal take his feet and stamp the Jahannam, it is a worse punishment. Nothing in the Jahannam will be worse than this. This is also an analogy you can use. This is also the anger of Allah. The anger of Allah Azza wa Jal is worse than any punishment in the Jahannam. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator of the Jahannam. So if Allah Azza wa Jal becomes upset or takes his feet and stamps the Jahannam, it is worse than anything else that can be offered in the hell. So it is also, in addition, another form of punishment. So after Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that, listen to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. How he loves creation and mankind. How Allah Azza wa Jal loves good and hates to punish, tells us in ayah number 31. يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ هَذَا مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنُ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ أُدْخُلُوهَا بِسَلَامٍ this this is from ayah number 31 to 35. Allah Azza wa Jal says, the same time, Jannah will be brought close and near to the pious on that day. It is not going to be far from them. So inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. This is you and I. People who are striving their whole life every day. You're not just sitting in i'tikaf because you're asking Allah Azza wa Jal to protect you from the fire. But you are also sitting here and doing all these deeds, praying Qiyamul Layl, praying Taraweeh, fasting, reciting Quran, because you are asking Allah Azza wa Jal, you want Him to give you His Jannah. And inshallah, the Jannah on the Day of Judgment will be brought very close to the pious, to the muttaqeen. هَذَا مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ This is what they were promised. Jannah, the people who were sincere, the people who prayed, the people who had sincerity, ikhlas, the people who fasted, zakat, qiyamul layl, hajj, all the righteousness, all the good deeds. Allah Azza wa promised us something for all the good that we do. And so this is the day Allah Azza wa will fulfill His promise. Who are the people that will deserve this? Who the ones, the ones who feared Allah Azza wa Jal in secret and had a heart that has turned to Him in repentance, in forgiveness. 
Notice that Allah Azza wa Jal talks about a person who remembers him in secret. This is also based on a hadith, an authentic hadith, that we all know that a Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions Sabatun Yuvilluhum Allahu fi Zilli Yomala Zilla Illa Zillu and one of them Rajulun Zakar Allahu Ta'ala Khaliyan Fafa Dataina. Seven people, seven groups of people will be shaded on the day of judgment, on a day where there will be no shade except the shade of Allah Azza wa Jal. From the seven groups of people is going to be that person. When he or she him themselves, they begin to tear and they begin to cry because they start to think about the punishments of the Jahannam. And at the same time, they are crying in happiness of how merciful and, how, and the love that Allah Azza wa Jal and that which He has in store in the paradise. And so by themselves, when nobody is watching, nobody doesn't know, everybody has gone to sleep, that person's light in their room is still on and they are crying to Allah Azza wa Jal either by themselves or in Qiyamul Layl reciting the Qur'an praying to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and they begin to cry. They love Allah Azza wa Jal and they love to see that what Allah Azza wa Jal has promised. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause that our eyes become soft, cause that our eyes will cry. Every one of us are hearing Quran each and every single night with our mashayikh reciting to us. We are hearing these exact same words being recited to us. If you find yourself that in your heart you want to cry and it is not happening, لا تحزن. Don't be afraid. Because this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ told us about. If a person cannot cry naturally by hearing the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, take the next step. Make yourself cry. Make yourself cry. Force it out of you. Wallahi, I tell you, wallahi, a person who does this forces themselves to cry. Lillahi azza wa jal. Only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi, you will find that that person, the next time they find themselves, they want to cry, they will never have to force themselves. It will come to them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes even further than that. Let's say you force yourself to cry. Still not happening. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Force yourself even more to cry because you can't be you can't cry by force. So cry because this is the state of your heart. That even when you're forcing yourself to cry, you still can't get it out. So cry because you are in this state. And so you see where this is going, brothers and sisters." There isn't a single alim from the ulama except that their hearts tear when they hear the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. And so we ask ourselves, da'iman abada, always and forever, that if we find our hearts in the state that it becomes hard, just realize that it is something that can always be fixed. And, and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to soften our hearts that we tear for Him whenever, however we hear His words, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Udkhuluha bi salam, thalika yawmul khulud. Tells the muttaqeen, Allah, you and I, tells us, Udkhuluha bi salam, enter the Jannah with peace and security. That is the eternal life that is waiting for you. Udkhuluha bi salam. Bi salam with peace. In Surah Al Ra'd, Allah Azza wa describes what the salam is. The salam is actually from the angels. The angels will come to a person who has made it. They've passed the test of the dunya. They will come and they will flap their wings, clapping in joy and happiness, and they will say to that person, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum fani'ma uqubah. Peace be unto you. Because of the patience that you had in this dunya, what a beautiful ending you have. And the angels will clap and they will celebrate. They will celebrate that this person 
after all the tests, the hardships, the trials in the dunya, they've passed all of them. Now it is time to fulfill and reap the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal keep us patient. Notice in the ayah in Surah al rad Allah Azza wa Jal says, Bima sabartum, because of what they were patient with. Because Jannah is not something easy. It is not something that you strive for and a person will be reclining at the same time. A person must sweat with tears if they want to be in that Jannah. You must always continue to work hard. This is why Allah Azza wa Jal uses the word sabr when he talks about the people who are in the Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us patient. لَهُمَّ يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ In the Jannah they will have anything and everything they want. Anything that they think of will come to them. And this brings me now to another section we will break from this. This is also part of our tafsir. But we just had a nice detailed discussion of the Jahannam, the hellfire and everything in it. Wouldn't it be fair that we also do the same for the Jannah? Let's follow the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal in the Qur'an. So I don't wish to instill fear in your hearts, except that I follow it with hope. This is a key to da'wah. Anytime you try to give da'wah to someone, and if you find that the only way to get through to them is to talk about the punishments of Allah Azza wa Jal, don't leave them this way. But of them hope that after all the punishments, all the severity that people will go through, Allah Azza wa Jal also forgives and there is another destination and that is the Jannah. وَلَدَيْنَا mazid. They will get the paradise. They will get everything they want in it. And they will also get something extra. The something extra is something greater than the paradise. If you do not know what this is, Stay tuned. Insha'Allah ta'ala, this is our discussion on Tuesday.